everybody. Happy Friday. Big dog, it's Friday. Happy TDIF, everybody. <laughs> it's so great to have you here today. We are so happy to um, get started on this one. This one is um, getting your pup off the couch uh, and in interacting and engaging and having a lot of fun. And um, I'm really excited about today's uh, craft. We're going to be putting together a fleece dog ball treat dispensing toy so um that's a it's a mouthful but it'll be so super easy and fun to make and this is an easy fun one to do with your kiddos too so um grab the family put get the popcorn ready and sit back and relax and we're just gonna have a great old time putting this one together i can't wait so yeah this one's a lot of fun and it couldn't be easier so it Anybody can do this one. The, the barrier of entry is super low. So it's a great one. That seems to be a theme with all of our crafts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like easy, simple, like a lot of fun. Don't have to think a whole lot about measuring and cutting and sewing and and all that kind of all that kind of stuff. I'm sure we'll get there one of these days. But but so far the theme is easy and quick. Um, all right, so couple simple ingredients. I don't know if you saw the, the photo that we posted yesterday on the supplies for, for today's craft. Super easy. Sharp pair of scissors and a, this is uh, an interactive dog ball. Um, it is from JW. It's called a Holy Roller and Hillary's got her tags already on it. Um, and it's really great. It's a uh, flexible rubber rubber. It's non-toxic. It's super safe um, And it's designed to put treats in it and then and the, your dog will roll around and the treats come out or you could put like a larger Treat like a pig's ear or something uh, in there um, for them That would take a little bit more time for them to get out but what the idea that we have which is really kind of fun is to make this even more challenging and um and i think it also helps protect the ball from getting chewed up for those yeah. super strong yeah. chewers that will eat through pretty much anything even the most indestructible toys are destructible absolutely <laughs> that's leon for sure he would have back in his younger years he he would definitely chew any sort of rubber toys or kongs or things like that so yeah. this yeah. this method uh Definitely helps protect it. I think we'll keep the ball as a one solid stable ball for yeah. longer. And yeah, and it's pretty durable. Um, we, we got these on Amazon. Um, there, uh, a number of the reviewers that really love this um, said it lasts, lasts quite a while. Again, it depends on how tough a chewer your pup is. There is uh, There are different versions of this toy. The one that has the solid um, hexagon space in here is a little a little sturdier rubber um, and so that's the one I would recommend that you get um, I uh, was originally looking at uh, places like Walmart and stuff for uh, a toy like this and I found one and it was really flimsy and I was even concerned that by um, adding the fleece is what was is what we're gonna that's the other ingredient the other supply that we're gonna do by adding that to this um, that it was actually going to pull the toy apart even before you got it finished. So I would recommend getting a good sturdy one. And we'll put links to um, this particular one because we really, really like this um, in the instructions when we put that together so that you'll have, you'll know exactly what to get. Um, and, and what There's also them. different sizes. So yeah. I, I, I have the same one that Patty has on her hand, which is, I think, the small. Yeah. Uh huh. And there's also a mini. So there's mini, small. This one's a medium, and then there's also a large. There might be one more, bigger than that too. But um, yeah. I think the small is a great for like kibble size treats mm -hmm. to to put in. The mini would work as well. This one, uh, the medium is a little bit bigger, so you're going to need a little bit bigger items to put inside of it. So right. you'll kind of see once we get to that step. Right, right, exactly. So you got your you got your little JW Holy Roller is what it's called. And then um, you're just gonna get some fleece. I just, I went ahead and cut a couple long strips of some just random fleece that I have uh, laying around the house. Basically, so, oh, go ahead. So for me, I had, uh, I don't know if you, if, if you saw the uh, dog bed, 
that we made a couple weeks ago. These uh -huh. were the fleeces that I used. I'm just using the leftovers from that particular project. So getting to kind of repurpose some of those. That's great. I would recommend, um, depending on the size of the ball. So for this medium ball, this fleece is pretty thin. Mm -hmm. I might recommend a little thicker fleece That's if you I have had. the bigger ball. Um, yeah. I think that will just, it'll help. You'll kind of see what we're, what we're going after, but that, that thicker fleece might help a little bit. Yeah. There. Yeah. I agree. Um, and I just like it for uh, the thicker fleece. Now this isn't the plush stuff. That's really thick. It's yeah. kind of that medium weight, uh, which I think you could probably use the plush stuff, although you probably get some little, um, <laughs> little fuzzies everywhere, which is fine. You can throw it in the wash and, and, that, and that'll go away. But this, this medium, really the, the medium thickness works really, really well. And I think it's a little more durable than yeah. kind of the thinner um, that you'll have. So the idea is basically to cut uh, fleece that's about anywhere between six and eight inches. And I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna call this tall, six to eight inches tall. Um, I think this is just a few feet wide. I basically cut, I got a couple yards of this um, for this project and I just cut the the short end of the of the yardage um, About eight. This is about eight inches. Um, you can do shorter. I think are you doing yours about six five or six? Mine are about seven. Some of them seven. are a little smaller because okay. I was just yeah. using the remnant So yeah. if you have longer and shorter size uh, Strips, that's totally fine. My only recommendation for that would be to intersperse them so that it's not just one side, like as you're start starting to tie them onto the ball, it's not just one side just is using the short pieces and one side is using the long ones, just kind of mix right. them up um, right. throughout. Mm -hmm. And the size is kind of neither here nor there, like use what you've got and it doesn't have to be perfect. There is, yeah, we're tying knots, so it's not gonna be, you're not gonna need to have it consistent all the way throughout the- Right, the right, exactly. So the idea then is to basically cut strips um, of the fleece. And I've just got, you know, a couple pieces here kind of folded over um, so that I'm cutting a couple at a time. And I'm going, I'm going with about one inch and everything's just eyeballed. The, the length is eyeball. You can just make it whatever length you think is gonna work. You need something I would say at a minimum three to four inches. I wouldn't go any smaller than three yes. to four inches. Uh, because you're going to be tying a knot with this fleece and it'll really shrink up and it'll be harder to to work with if it's under four inches but i would say six to eight is a good number um yeah. i kind of wanted mine to be long and floppy so, so that's what i i pick longer longer fleece and for that small size ball um i think it works to have them about an inch inch and a half wide Mm -hmm. If you're using the medium or the larger balls, you could also make the strips a little wider too because their yeah, connectors are a little bit wider as well. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So we're just going to make a bunch of these strips. And then the idea is that we're going to be tying, the, tying them around the entire circumference of the ball. And all of this is going to, again, it's going to protect all of these little connection points. And it's going to make the, the holes smaller, which makes it more challenging to get the treats inside. It also gives, um, depending on your dog, if they, like, it gives them something to, it's almost like a tug of war toy then as well. Because oh, yeah. they can kind of grab those ends and shake it and see if they can shake the treats out as well. So right. I have a feeling that might be the technique that gets used <laughs> around here. You'll have to share the results with the audience here with Leon and Lulu. Yep. Let us know. It could be a tug of war where it could be a tug of war toy between <laughs> two of them. That's what I'm trying to say. My dentures kind of slip a little bit sometimes. All right. All righty. All right, so this, this is not going to be the most exciting thing to, <laughs> to watch <laughs> today because it's just so easy. It's just too easy. But you can also use um, 
the fleece works great, but if you have other materials or things like if you Old have t-shirts, yeah, yeah, something else that you'd like to use for the parts that you're tying on, no problem. Use whatever you've got. Um, I think it would it would work. The nice thing about the fleece is it's pretty durable, so if you want to toss it in the washing machine, it's going to hold up pretty well. Right. Um, all right, I'm cheating. I'm going to try and cut four at once. Yeah, the the really nice thing about the whole the whole toy when it's all said and done is you can throw the entire thing in the wash. Um, obviously, once the treats are out of it, uh, and you don't want to put it in the dryer because it's the right. Rubber. But you can definitely put it in the in the washing machine on a quick wash, and that'll keep it nice and clean, and it'll really last a long, long time. One of the things our pups loved is both uh, Daisy and Clover loved were, were toys that they could swing around. Yep. That they could flip around, and this I know would be a perfect one. They would they would just love that. All right, so I'm gonna. I'm going to cut this last one and then we're going to just dive right in. Okay. I can, I can continue cutting. All right. So then the idea is to, to take one of your strips of fleece. <laughs> really? This is so hard. Don't blink. This is going to go, <laughs> it's going to happen quickly. You just run it through one of the connections. And you're going to just tie one little knot. Boom. There you go. You just do that again and again, all through the ball. And you're going to want to do all the connections. Now, on mine, um, on the small one that I did, I did leave a couple of the connections undone just uh -huh. because of the size of the treat I'm using. So I wanted to make sure I could put some treats in it and take them out okay, but my fleece is, you know, depending on the, the width, the thickness of your fleece and things like that, you can kind of do what you want, but if you're using sort of a thinner one, I think every connection is probably the way to go to make it, you know, yeah. pretty <laughs> fluffy and puffy after you. Right, and so here's the thing, as much or as little fleece that you add to this, it'll make the toy that much more challenging or easy to use. Yeah. So you don't have to cover the whole ball. Um, you can leave quite a few spots open for the treats to fall out. Um, it's just, it's totally up to you. Uh, there are just so many pups that really could benefit from that mental stimulation of solving puzzles, right? And um, kind of helping them from being bored. So yeah. um, this is a great, great way to help kind of keep your pups active and happy and engaged with something that they have a lot of fun and they get rewarded for playing. So they get a treat every time they knock a treat out. That's, that's a reward for for getting up off the couch and, and having fun, which is great. Yeah, especially if you have a, a food driven pup or like Lulu is a basset hound, so she's really scent driven. So she's really curious to try to find things. And so this is a great one for her to keep her interested in it and, you know, try to solve that. Like, where is that coming from? How do I get it out? All right, I'm gonna tie. One more, and then I'm going to do another. Do another close up, so you can kind of see. I'm just kind of interspersing the different colors. And you could do, Hillary. Are you doing one solid color all the way? Yep, I am. I make it more of the red version left. So. Yeah. So you can do whatever you whatever you'd like, but you can see, I'm working my way around this little hexagon here. How's everybody doing today? Thank you so much for being here. Give us some hearts and likes if you like this silly little <laughs> activity. <laughs> if it looks like something you'd love to do, we'd love to know. This would be or so if, fun. Go ahead. If you have similar, uh, if you've used similar toys or have sort of the similar, um, you know, sort of puzzle toys, what's worked well for you. I know that those, they're not as easy as, 
I'd like to be able to find those kind of puzzle toys. There's, you know, there's a few that are pretty complex, but I like this one because it's it's a, still a puzzle, but it's a pretty simple one, especially if you're just like starting out on teaching them yeah. how to use puzzle toys and things like that. Well, and to me, they're either super, super hard or super, super easy. Yeah. Like, you know, they get it solved right away and then they're bored again. You know, they don't really want to play with it too much because it's not all that challenging or it's so hard. They just get frustrated and they don't know, you know, they walk away because they don't know how to get what the, the reward that's in it. And then you end up solving the puzzle for them, right. <laughs> getting, the, getting the tree out and going, there you go. This, um, this one of the other things, because it's sort of scent based, I guess you would say, um, that you can do with this is um, putting like bits of your like worn T-shirts, old T-shirts and things and oh, just yeah. stuffing the your T-shirt in there so they can kind of smell you, especially if you're away for work or going on a short trip or something like that. Something that gives them, oh, I can I smell my my people and it's, a, it's kind of a fun way to use that. Yeah. yeah, scent. I agree. That's really sweet. Um, years ago, when we went on our first vacation after getting Daisy, of course, I was a puddle of tears because I didn't want to <laughs> leave my new puppy at home. Uh, but we had made the plans before we got her and left her with our uh, with a, our actually with our dog trainer and um, who also did some boarding. And so we knew she was in good hands. So I wasn't worried about that. I was just so afraid she was going to miss us when we were gone because we were going to be gone for a couple of weeks. And um, our trainer, she said she had the best idea. She said, when you get there, write a postcard to your dog, Daisy, and then rub it all over, like rub it on your arms and she like under your arms, wherever you smell, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then put it in the mail. And she goes, I will read the postcard to your pup. And then I will let her sniff it. And then she'll smell you and remember, you know, so that's your way of saying that you're thinking of her. And I thought that was a great idea. So this could be, you know, if you put t-shirts in there or other items in there that, that have your scent on them, it's a great way to have your pup remember I love that idea. I think I think that's the sweetest story. And I just love and to have something that's coming to them. So it's it's not something that they've left necessarily, you know. Yeah. You're obviously gonna leave them with all sorts of stuff, but having it having mail for your dog that they're actually <laughs> excited about. I think that's adorable. I love I, oh, and of course, like we were all <laughs> we were all over it. Yeah. Both of us were like rubbing this postcard, <laughs> you know, like Oh, I mean, you're silly, but it, you know, dogs are so scent driven, especially our hounds, right? They're, yeah. you know, the scent hounds um, are just so scent driven and motivated. And um, yeah, she said that Daisy absolutely loved it. She goes, and if she chews it up, that's, you know, if that's what she wants to do, that's great too. But um, yeah, it was, it made us feel so much better. So that's, you know, yeah, I love which is that. Really, really cool. And this could be the same thing. You could put, some you can cover this in fleece but put some stinky t-shirt material inside or just put the stinky t-shirt material inside and, and don't cover it in fleece yeah yeah this is really the whatever you think is going to work best for your pup um and this is so simple like there's really no wrong way to do it so yeah exactly exactly all right we're getting there this one's gonna take a little bit of time. Not all of our crafts are on the edge of your seat riveting. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We'd rather sit with you and go through all the steps from the very, very beginning to the very, very end, just like we would if you were here with us, right? Yeah. So um, it's that much more fun. And then you get to see, and you know, so many people are real visual. I know I'm a visual learner. I like to see somebody doing something from beginning to end so that I can learn it better. All right. I, Hillary and I were chatting. I, we think that this, this, there's about the same number of holes, I think, in the small one that there is in the, the, the medium size that you have, possibly. I believe so. I think it's just the size of the little connector pieces, the little 
bars that make up the hexagons, those are a little bigger on my version than they are on the small version. Yeah, okay. So you can kind of see, you can kind of see the hole that's left for the treats yep. to come out. So these are pretty good. And I'm covering all, it just depends on how tight, how tight you tie the knots. Here's, I'll show you another one that's a little more kind of buried, but see, so there's, there's good room. This one would be good for like little kibbles and stuff or small, little small treats. The other thing is we would recommend dry treats. Not, oh yes. Not the wet ones. Absolutely. You could use and wet, something that's wet. got a, a pretty strong scent. Like if you, if you have treats that have a pretty strong scent, that, yeah. that I think that will work well for this. Okay. Well, our pups have good scent capability, so they can yep. probably smell a crumb that's left inside <laughs> <laughs> a week later. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to mention is always keep an eye on your pups when they're playing with toys. Um, it's it's really just the best practice. You know, this is a great toy to keep them from being bored, but you don't want to leave them alone with it for too long just in case, right? In case they um, do end up chewing any of your toys apart, you want to kind of yeah. keep them close eyes so they don't swallow any parts and bits. It's just kind of good practice. Yeah, that was one of the things about having Daisy when she was young is trying to figure out ways to keep her attention without having, because she was the only dog. So without having us have to entertain her all the time was, was a hard thing to do or hard thing to figure out because we'd give her a toy and she'd be she'd chew through that in 30 seconds. You yeah. Know? Um, which was fun. We did, we did that a lot, but we're like, oh, can't you just... <laughs> <laughs> not chew the squeaker out of it want just want just play with it with the squeaker inside um so we ended up coming up i i ended up coming up with it a game for her um so for all you scent hound um pup parents out there this might work for you too and this doesn't require a toy but what i ended up doing is i'd have her sit in the kitchen this is she you have your pup has to know how to sit and stay that's the only thing so she, I'd have her sit and stay in the kitchen and I would get a handful of treats. Got some treats right here. So I just get, you know, a handful of treats and I would run around the house and I would hide these treats all over the house. I'd probably hide a dozen or so around the house. Not anything too hard or too high, you know. Um, some were real easy to find, some were not all that easy to find. Um, not really buried, but maybe under a little blanket or, or a pillow yeah. or something. And then I'd go back to the kitchen and she's all excited to wait for me to say go. And I'd say go and she would go. Now, at first, it, she didn't know what the game was, but I'd say, okay, let's go find the treats. Go find the treats. Well, now she, her nose is down and she's trying to find something. And I kind of, you kind of walk her over to the first one just so she gets an idea of what she's trying to find. Of course, she knows you had treats in your hand when you're in the kitchen anyway. So they're, they're pretty smart. <laughs> they know where the treat cabinet <laughs> is and they know what, what you had in your hand. They want to know what happened to them. And I could sit down for at least probably 10 to 20 minutes. She would find them all within about the first five, right? And I would tell her when she's done, okay, that's it. Very good. That's good. Good girl. Good girl. You're all done. But she would probably spend the next 10 to 15 minutes trying to find more treats. And it was the best way <laughs> to get her to kind of, you know, stimulate her memory or, you know, her, her mind and, and uh, try to solve that puzzle. She loved that game. We do sort of something sort of similar, just, um, even within like where their little, like Lulu has kind of a big bed crate area. Uh -huh. So I'll even just tuck them in, in and around. She has toys in there. She has her little bedding in there. So yeah. I'll sort of tuck them in and around in there. And then with the little bed that Leon likes to lay in, it's got a pouch in it. So I can kind of tuck things around and then tuck a few in different spots around the living room and stuff like that. It definitely, it's, it keeps them busy slightly longer than yeah. <laughs> it would have 
exactly. that if they would have just get, gotten the treat. And they really do enjoy it. Like, oh, they yeah. started realizing, like, okay, I need to go search. I need to go hunt. So I think oh, that I that's, that. I think that's fun for them. Totally a fun game. I, I just loved having that, that time to, whether it was finished cooking dinner or just want to sit and relax and kind of veg out for a few minutes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a fun game. I see a lot on Facebook um, folks that, you know, have new puppies or their dogs are bored and they're, you know, they don't know what to do or they're chewing up stuff. And obviously there's a puppy phase that, you know, a chewing yeah. phase for puppies that you pretty much can't avoid, but um, certainly they should be able to grow out of it. And by doing things like this, this would definitely prevent a lot of um, slippers from being chewed up, <laughs> <laughs> things like that. <laughs> Clover was hysterical. She never chewed up a toy. She didn't know what toys were when we got her, which is so sad, but she was kind of on the streets for I think the first four years. And um, once she kind of knew what toys were, she would just carry them. She was so funny. She carried them around like a little security blanket from one, one room to the next. Well, every once in a while, my husband and I would go to look for our slippers in the evening and one slipper's missing. Well, she had picked it up and carried it around like it was a toy. <laughs> <So> <laughs> She wouldn't chew up our slippers, but she treated them like her favorite toys. And oh my gosh, it was hysterical. So you'd find a toy or your slipper buried with toys somewhere around the house under a bed. Or yeah, Leon was a definitely a chewer. We he yeah he would get things. shoes. He would get the remote. Oh. He would get shoelaces and yeah, yeah whatever what whatever he could get underwear. Over. They love oh, my bra out in the middle of the oh, yard. Yeah. <laughs> what in the world? How did you even get this? So yeah, Lulu not as much, and and Tatum or and okay. Tatum wasn't either as much of a as much of a chewer. I remember having guests like family, you know, your in laws or my parents come and they're staying in the guest room and they leave you know, dirty socks on the floor the next morning or whatever, or maybe even in their, in their suitcase or what, what have you. And the guest room bedroom door is open and the pup goes in and grabbing that sock and walking around the house with it. And you're like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't think if it's your <laughs> sock, but if it's a guest in your house and your mom or dad, are they like, I'm kind of sorry about that. <laughs> that you're gonna have to kind of keep your door closed either put your socks away or keep your door closed those are fair yeah. game <laughs> or having something in their per like oh, my yeah. cousin staying at our house and having something like candy or something in her purse you know yeah. having a purse on the ground in the guest room should be totally fine right not from a scent <laughs> so he was like oh you have chewing gum this seems delicious <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Oh, that's too funny. They know how to embarrass you, don't they? They know, they really know how to make you put you on the spot there. That's too funny. All right. I think one of the things that I, I didn't mention at the beginning, and we'll we'll put instructions to this. Um, we'll put a write-up like we usually do, and, and on our website, you can go and get the, the instructions so that you can print everything and uh, and try it at home. Uh, but I think it probably takes about a half a yard uh, to do this of fleece. I know you can use leftovers, but if you're actually going to the store, yeah. I would probably get about a half a yard of fleece to, to work your way around the ball. Mine looks like a bad hair day. <laughs> 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 it's getting covered up, but it's not quite full yet, but it's it's getting there. Oh, this is yeah, yours is fun. really cute. That is looking. I really like fun. the combo of the different uh, the different colors on yours, yeah. different colors and patterns. I think that's cute. Well, your fabric has it, right? I mean, I I could have gone with um, with this kind of rainbow print, uh, but it looked a little girly, and I wanted something that was both you know boy and girl kind of friendly. So I I went ahead and got two two just a and I'm just being weird. I'm just weird. <laughs> I want all cause. I got to make things difficult for myself. I can't make it easy. 
even though this is super easy. All right, and I did, I could have uh, combined because I had two patterns from the beds that we made and I could have combined them, but I was sort of trying to delineate one of them is going to be Leon, so one of them is going to be Lulu. So that was, I think that's a great idea, especially if they're behind that. I have a feeling realistically they will both end up being Leon's because that's just kind of the type of pup he is. <laughs> He's a definitely our alpha. And he likes to make his assertiveness known when Lulu tries to have anything fun around. <laughs> Uh, well, he's he's lived a good long what fourteen years now. Yeah. He deserves he do he deserves the extra spoiling. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's fun. I can tell it's fun for him, and it's kind of fun for Lulu too. To you know, it's it's a bit of a game. Like, don't come next to my toys. <laughs> and so she'll are you sure? Around and see if she can get them, and then he'll bait her. He'll put the toy in the middle of the room to try to say, like, and then pretend like he's just laying down and sleeping and see if she'll come. He's full on trying to trap her so that he can yell at her about trying to take his toy. <laughs> oh, poor sweetie. <laughs> That's too funny. Most of the pups are great. This is, um, again, don't I can't underscore how easy this is. You could get your grandkids together on an afternoon and make you know get a couple of these balls and get some fleece and start tying knots and wouldn't that be fun for the grandkids to feel like they're they can do something for for your pup? It's really a great yeah, family I mean, activity. Absolutely. It's it's definitely and kind of making it if you had a few different uh fabrics or fleeces so that everybody could kind of pick their own or make their own combinations of things and yeah let them be a little bit individualized whatever they yeah. exactly now there are large holes and small holes on these toys and i'm thinking the small hole at least for mine is pretty it's getting pretty small so the problem the Trees probably won't fall out of the small holes. Probably. I think on mine because the fleece is so thin. Yeah. Um, even on the small one, you could probably get it out of the small hole, but realistically, it's probably going to come out of the the larger wherever yeah. those larger ones are. And I, I'm as I'm doing this, I you know you can put your finger in here and kind of play with it so that there are some some definite openings for for the treats to come out. So I'm getting near the end here. I might have to cut a little more. Um, and then before you get it too full up, you're gonna wanna fill it with treats. I think the easiest way to kind of figure out where your fill hole, especially if you're gonna leave a couple of the um, spacers without fleece on them, mm -hmm. the easiest place to do that is where that bottom yep. filled in hole is just so you can find it quickly every time um, I think if that's, that's where you're going to use to fill the treats it's a great idea i think i just happened to do that leave, leave space there yeah it's and for these larger ones, you could definitely do two pieces if you wanted to, or make the fleece a little thicker, whatever yeah. the case may be. But you can kind of see, um, even on a small connector, there's a fair amount of space oh, on wow. each side. Yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. Which I'm going to use a little bit larger treat in this one. It's not the perfect, it, it wouldn't be my end solution, but it happens to be the ones that I have at my house. So <laughs> we're yeah. gonna use that for this one. And I have a different one that's a little bit more like a kibble for the small. Oh. Yeah, I would probably, we don't have any kibbles at home. I did get some treats for this, but I would probably use kibble size. 
kibble food for for this just the small size ball yeah um, or uh, you know you can you don't have to fill the whole thing with fleece you don't have to cover the whole thing with fleece and that would that way larger treats can be used um because there'll be bigger holes for it to come out yeah Yeah, when I walked downstairs with one of them that I had finished already, both the dogs were very interested in what is that thing that you they didn't get to play with it yet because I hadn't finished it or I hadn't put the treats <laughs> under anything, but they were both very curious as to oh, what is that fluffy, fun looking thing? That <laughs> That's for me, right? 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 <laughs> right? Right. Obviously, you have something in your hands. That's obviously <laughs> for me. <laughs> All right, I got a few more to cut. I'm almost done here. So that is. You all done? One. Yeah, completed. And you can see, let me just kind of. That's sort of the large opening. So it's a fairly big. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a fairly big space for, for treats to fall out of. I think it's easier to tie some of that thinner fleece too. Some of these, yes, are, yeah, and the ball's smaller, so it's just getting my fingers in there. And as you keep on going, it gets a little bit more challenging to get them <laughs> in through, yeah, around. I just think this is the cutest thing. And it'll this will protect that rubber, you know, it won't get chewed up. So and, yeah, forever. This will last forever. And if you're worried, like Leon was definitely, he could chew through anything. And if you're worried about that for your pup, this might be a way to get to use those rubber toys without so much yeah. danger of them chewing right through it yeah exactly and as i said before i would get i would get this one um only because i really think it's a, a better quality I, I did find some that were shaped like this they would fall apart i just wouldn't feel comfortable um using them for this so just a couple more Again, this would just make the best little gift for somebody that has a pup um, or gets a new puppy. This would be, oh gosh, for a new puppy that teethes and chews and, you know, finds anything to get a hold of, this would be a great toy for them. Yeah. I was and always I love the idea of um, having, if you have kids with a new puppy, to having them create it for the pup. Like, I think, I think that would be nice. Um, it's a nice way to keep both of them entertained. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and I, you know, I, I love getting gifts for, for dog owners, but I'm always afraid of like what kind of toy would work well with that dog. You know, I'd, I'd hate for them, the dog to chew, choke on something or um, the toy breaks as soon as you give it to the, you yeah. know, the recipient. This would be the perfect gift, really, truly. Um, you know, it's going to be safe for the dog, for, for, the family and all that good stuff. So yep, yeah, I'm all all done. I've got a little hole there at the end <laughs> as I cover it up. I've got yep. a hole there. And that'll that'll be where my and I'm guessing, you know, so I've got a couple treats here. You can just plop those inside. Um, and you can hear the ones that I'm using. It makes a little noise, which is nice probably shaking the table as I do this, but it's making a little noise, which is great. So that adds to the interactivity of it. And it looks like it falls right out of that hole too. So there is an easy spot for, but this is a fun, this would be a fun toy for the for pups to play with. This is I'll look at that one. Lean on version. So that's the same put size. A couple kibbles in here. That's the same size as this one. Just so everybody knows. That's What's the that? same the same ball size. Yes. Yes, this one. So, 
These are fun. I love this. This is going to be so great. This will be great. Yeah. They definitely fall out pretty easy um, of the large hole, like right yeah. where you, right where I put them in. That yeah. one doesn't have quite as much fleece around it, so it's one of those things. I think I might add a couple more pieces, just because. It's a little too easy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to add a couple more pieces to that <laughs> spot. And that's a great idea to tie it just to cover that hole for a little bit, just so they don't fall out so quickly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, everybody. What did you think? Did you have fun today? Was this a good one? A little, a little, uh, little interactive treat dispensing toy. Get those pups thinking and off the couch and mentally stimulated and just having a good time. No more bored pups. Easy, super easy peasy toy to make. Um, long lasting. You can throw it in the wash, all that good stuff. We'll put the instructions for that on our website and put a link to it in the replay. Um, and we'd love to see any of your pictures that you do of this one yourself. That would be so yes. much fun to see your, your pups running around playing with this toy. Please share. We, we would love to see. How, how they turn out, how your pups like them. And it, like I said, if you have any other ideas for puzzle toys that you think are, are really effective and have worked well with your dog, please share those as well. Cause that's just, it's one of those things that we're always trying to keep them stimulated and keep them happy. And, and that's definitely, the stimulation is one of the things that will really keep, keep your pup happy. So exactly. please exactly. share that. And let everybody know, we're giving you a laundry list of things to do. <laughs> Let everyone know uh, about our TDIF craft shows. And um, they're not always going to be crafts, but for now, that's what we're having fun doing. So just to celebrate the love of our pups. Um, every Friday, uh, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time right here. We'll be happy to see you again next week. Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Share this with everybody. Grab the tutorial. Grab some fleece and a ball and have some fun with your family this weekend. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Thank one. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.